Oh, this is how episode 30 ended. Vengeance, huh? Yeah, I'd be yes. pissed. It's Scar. Marco must have told him about his role in Ishmael. Yeah, if you thought there was any hope for Scar turning things around, that might have set him back a little bit. He was having moments. He was having moments of reflection. And then he heard who's really responsible. But that's interesting, because that's going to turn him against the homunculi and ally him, at least in some sense, with Ed, Al, Roy, etc. Scar joins the battle. I'll let you know if I hear anything new. The Fuhrer's basically hired you to be his hostage. Exactly. Be all right? Well, it's all in how you look at it, I guess. This close to him, it just means I'll have a better chance to kill him in his sleep. You so positive. Me. <laughs> oh, the way yeah. he said that. Pass this on for me. Tell the colonel that Scar is back. Sure thing, no problem. Hey, Lieutenant. Yes, what is it? I just want to say thanks for telling me about Ishva. I always, always love how kind everyone in the military is to Ed. It's awesome. My initial reading of Roy was that he was exploiting Ed, and, you know, maybe there's something to that. But I have a much less cynical view of that now, I think. There have been times where Roy has shown Ed a lot of kindness. And I think a lot of people in Roy's faction, if not Roy himself, they're not really sure how much they want Ed to get involved. Which is a noble thing, because they could definitely use his help, right? He has a lot of power. Episode 31, the 520 sends promise. Ah! 520. Pretty sure that's code in Chinese for I love you. Because U R Ling sounds like Wu Aini, which is I love you. When you send money, a lot of the times it's customary to end it with 520. That's terrible. It's tough to even hear about Ishval. Yeah, we've had to do it so often. What are you going to do when you get your real body back? I mean, afterwards. Well, let's see. First Sleep. thing, I really want to eat some of Winner's apple yeah, pie. Of course. <laughs> and what about you? I guess the first thing, I'll make some courtesy calls. Let Granny and our teacher know we're all right. Yeah, of course. They've both helped us out so much. <sighs> and you know what? They'll be smiling when they see us. Yeah. That'll be nice, just to see them smile. Yeah. Oh. I know things are rough right now, but I'm starting to cheer up. I'm sort of torn on whether or not I think they're even going to get the body back. I know that the show is setting up for a major tragedy. Many major tragedies, more than what we've already gotten. There are definitely still tragedies ahead for the Elric brothers. I'm praying, I really would love them to be successful. Although, you know, thinking about it in terms of life, right? Getting Al's body back would be a great relief, but there's always going to be more to do. I mean, they're, they're going to be on a never-ending journey. And sometimes solving problems and getting the answers that you've been looking for creates new difficulties. You know what I mean? There are a lot of things especially with Ed, that are buried beneath this desire to restore things to the way they used to be, that he's not looking at. And I think in some ways, his goals are a mask for that, a mask for the pain. And maybe one of those underlying things is that things will never be the same. He can't ever get his childhood back. Although accomplishing this would be such a wonderful thing for both of them. Well, I found a trace of hope for us. Mm -hmm. You know how our alchemy would work when we were under central command? Gotta study Alka history. What about Scar and that girl? Exactly. They were the only ones who could use it. Well, if that's the case, What's their they're secret? doing something different. Something with their alchemy we don't know about. Yeah, which means we that haven't face. hit a dead end yet. So excited. We can still find her! But this city is huge, and we don't have any clues. <laughs> but we do have a clue, Al. It's her strange cat. What the hell is that? There he is! gift from me. Oh, come on. Couldn't you have just gotten me some magazines with girls in them? Can't you have both? These should keep you from slacking off while we're gone. <laughs> Leaving already? Yep. Gonna eat some of that famous Western cuisine. Hold down the fort till we get back. Right. I'll see you later. Is it just me or is there a lot of innuendo in that scene? Uh, it's just me? Okay. Sorry. Anyway, I was wondering about this. Because this maybe is Bradley's oversight. He assigned everyone else away from Roy. He's paying Hawkeye to keep her hostage. My boy Havoc just slipped under the radar. Oh, Officer Fallman. I thought you had already left for the north. I've got to return something to the Colonel first. Chessboard. Very symbolic. Things are going to be tough without my bodyguard. Just don't get killed, sir. Good advice. One other thing. Try not to slack off too much. What is with all this slacking off talk? Was that code? Everything's code with Roy. Everything's a game. My pawn. 
Yeah, it started off as a hobby of mine. My bishop. Yes, sir. I consider it an honor. My rook. Hello, sir. My knight. I doubt that I'm the brightest guy you'll meet, but I do know how to shoot. And worst of all... I'll follow you into hell if you want. They've even taken my queen. But I'm still not in checkmate. Still got the king, moving one slow piece at a time. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, it was a hey, code or have something. Have you seen this cat? I'm trying to find the little girl. It's not a cat, it. but okay. <laughs> no, it looks like this. Yeah, they obviously still have something going on. I mean, they were never going to stop, right? Sucks for Fury that he's the pawn. That's a little bit humiliating, but okay. I promise it's not some weird alien. Seems like this search is getting us nowhere. You know, they have a lot of free time for people with jobs. How do I get a job with the Amestrian military? Maybe I don't want that, actually. Sounds promising. I'll ask around and let you know what I find. Thank you, but I don't really want to get any deeper in debt to you than I already am. Speaking of, you owe me some money. So how about oh, yeah. you cough it up? Eyes on the road! Ah! <laughs> you remembered? Come on, how much did I borrow? 500 cents? It was 520 cents! Ooh. Don't con me. I'm not conning you! I'm just not a penny pincher like you are. I'm sorry, Colonel. I'm just gonna hold on to this. But I promise to pay you back when you become Fuhrer. Who told you? Lieutenant Hawkeye told me. And she told me about Ishval, too. Ed loves Roy, confirmed. Or he will love him when he becomes Fuhrer. He's withholding his love until later. He's not quite ready to say I love you, but we'll get there. But you will pay me back. All right, and when that day comes, I'll borrow some more change and pay that back when this country's a democracy. But when that day comes, I'm gonna ask to borrow even more money from you. You're not planning to let me off the hook for a very long time, are you? No, you get it. And you better not worry the lieutenant either. <laughs> Thanks for giving us a ride. You could always just stop lending him money, but I guess the point is Ed's telling him he's got his eyes on him to keep him accountable. It's Roy! Well, I'll be damned! Long of course. Time. <laughs> Hello, Vanessa. Well, good evening to you, Madam Christmas. Madam Christmas, huh? I was hoping you could cheer me up. You want a drink? It's probably not the best idea. I just got out of the hospital. But I could use something special. Hey, madam? Does this guy have anything resembling a normal life? Does he have any activities that don't involve military code? I was about to say, like when he walked in and Vanessa was all over him, I, like for a moment I had a fleeting hope that Roy was just gonna unwind and that we were gonna see him in his personal life, even as weird as that felt. But then I remembered who Roy is and lost all hope. Please, sir, you really shouldn't be giving out our secret line to civilians. <laughs> Not too bad for no fart like me. He knows. The ladies still come a-calling for my services. Full Metal Alchemist. Roy Mustang, holding the king, that's a cool shot. Full Metal Alchemist. Wondering when this guy's gonna make another appearance. You lost your arm. You couldn't protect the prince. And look at you now. <coughs> oh my god, show some sympathy, you know what she did? It's really gone. Your arm. You lost your arm. Please forgive me, grandfather. I'm sorry. That's one way to show your grief. You damn fool. All right, sympathy for that guy. He was just in shock, right? He didn't know how to cope with it. So he went immediately to discipline. But that was rough. I promised Lanfan that I would introduce her to an automail engineer. We decline. <gasps> we appreciate such a kind gesture, but you've already helped us enough. We can find an engineer on our own if we must. But Not one we like have Winry. to do something. The enemy has now clearly seen Lanfan's face. We refuse to risk the life of your engineer friend. That's very kind, actually. You're the only reason that my granddaughter is still alive. You have my gratitude. What? Do I look like the kind of doctor that wants gratitude? <laughs> that cigarette defies all gravity. Just clear out already. I'm not such a pushover that I'm going to let you take my bed for an extra night. Now get out. He's secretly like the nicest guy. Let's go. Right. I promise. I'll seek out the evil here. Remember us. We will return. 
Ling looking pretty cool. Oh, good evening, Dad. Good to see you. It's been a while. How are you? Fine. Are you sure I've grown up? And you, uh, looks like you've lost some weight. I think both of us have. How's work going? Keeping you busy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm surrounded by corpses as usual. Well, I actually spent the last few days treating some live patients. It's absurd, huh? The happiness on their face. No matter what, you never gave up on helping people. That takes courage. For that, for being a doctor, I love you. You stubborn jackass. <laughs> Come on in. It's not gourmet or anything, but I'll brew us up some coffee. Why was that sweet? Somehow. I said this guy was secretly nice, that's just an offhand comment. I didn't know we were actually going to focus on his life. <laughs> but he obviously cares a great deal. I mean, he's a good, good man. Just seen some stuff, I guess, which makes a lot of sense. I don't know if you actually exist or not, God, but cut me some slack. Even a guy like me needs a break. Just please let me enjoy the happiness of having a cup of coffee with my family. Wow. That was really touching. Yeah, um, yeah, I love the doctor now, I guess. <laughs> it's nice to see people, like, break through that shell. You know, have those moments. It feels honest, and, like, you appreciate it, because I think we can recognize on some level that that kind of exterior, like, the really cold, stern, tough, I hate everyone exterior is, it's like self-preservation, you know, because once you get hurt enough, it's hard to open up again. But he deserves it, I think, based on what I've seen from him. There he is. He's not got the shard? Ishval is now under our control, and all thanks to you. Well done, Major Kimbley. So tell us, how did the stone work out? It's beyond amazing. It lets you bypass the equivalent exchange to harness an immense power. Excellent. Write well up done. the details in your formal report for us. But we'll need the stone back first. <laughs> <gasps> what the hell do you think you're doing? Now let's see. I guess this makes you the only ones who know that I'm in possession oh, of no. the stone. Traitor! <laughs> well, now I know why he's in jail. <laughs> Subtle. I'm thinking about this, right? Like, the Philosopher's Stone allows you to bypass the laws of equivalent exchange. The reason I can think of for that is that the Philosopher's Stone is human souls. And there's still this looming question that started way back in the beginning that is, what could equal the value of a human soul? And I don't know. It seems undefined or infinite or something like that. You've been released. So Why? I made this decision. Yeah. I didn't say you could talk, Kimberly. Must have been someone pretty high up. I appreciate you taking care of me. I hope I never see you again. <laughs> 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 Just my way of saying thanks. What is this? I can't get it off! Help me! Don't do this to me! Gambling, please! Got him. It's nothing but a harmless toy. I thought you could give it to your kid or something. That's some pretty good alchemy. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious who's letting him out. It's gonna be Bradley or the Huonculi. It's been a while, Kimberly. It's Envy. So I take it I have you guys to thank? Yep, we could use a little extra help. My first day out of jail and I already have a job. You remember Dr. Marco, don't you? This is exciting and the terrifying. The scientist who created the Philosopher's Stone? How could I ever forget him? It appears he's escaped. Or we think he has. You think? We're still sorting out all of the details. One of the chimeras that we had watching over him has gone missing. Marco's specialty was transmuting living tissue. He might have used the chimera in his place. And if that wasn't bad enough, we think he might have escaped with an fallen warrior known as Scar. Did I get fooled again? Did I get fooled again by the, the body trick? Damn it. That is so exciting if true. Not as exciting as Ross still being alive. But pretty exciting, because that speaks really, really well of Scar. And also it makes Scar more dangerous. That just flipped my entire thing on its head. <laughs> After you've nabbed Marco for us, there's a certain little town we'll be asking you to wipe off the map. That's your kind of job, right? It's remarkable how cruel you are. They're really stepping up their plans, I guess. A new stone? Did you use Moorish Valens to make it? We actually used Dr. Marco's assistants who helped make the first stone for us. Your cruelty's infinite.
Why didn't you kill me back there? He is After alive. All I've done. Good guy, Scar. We haven't finished our conversation yet, Marco. Tell me everything you know about Kimberly. Also, you might be able to help me decipher some of the research notes my brother left behind. The Philosopher's Stone? Immortality! Mr. Marco, please teach me how to create the stone. How did you make it? I'm begging you to show me. No, I don't think he no, will. I can't. Yeah. Quiet. <laughs> you shouldn't desire such things. destroyed the surface. You can stop the bleeding, can't you? Right. What was that for? It will be easier for us to travel if your face is unrecognizable. It's time to leave. Huh? Okay. Where are we going? We need to get to the place where I hid my brother's research notes. The North. Scar road trip. Oh no! Well, I guess it's good he's getting out of town for a while with Kimberly out. I had a feeling Dr. Marco wouldn't tell Mei Chung about the Philosopher's Stone, but it's interesting that he told Ed. I guess she doesn't have the same drive in her eyes as Ed did, or that he trusts Ed more or something. Or maybe he's just had enough, which I would understand. Speaking of chess, this episode felt like a lot of positioning, putting a lot of pieces in motion. Kimberly's out, which is huge. I've been waiting for this since the beginning. Like, he's alive. That means he's going to become a villain. Scar Mei Chung, Dr. Marco, and I forget this guy's name going to the north to learn more about alchemy or alka history which we need to know because that's been the question posed by the last couple episodes or specifically the ones in gluttony's stomach ed and al are also on that path but maybe in a different way in a different form although who knows maybe their paths will cross then you have lan fan and her grandfather heading back to shing it seems i may have misinterpreted that and you got roy the chess master himself positioning his pieces so there's a lot of setup in this episode a lot of things happening oh and let's not forget havoc havoc still part of the picture which i think i think it's going to be important in some way. So that's the end of episode 31. I'll see you guys next time for 32.